Hey everybody, it's Robot here from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com. So back to the raffle bike, getting those tires on. I've already got a head start. Sorry, I didn't cover it all on video. But today I got a special guest. I got Glenn from Phoenix Scooter Club and he's doing much of the organization for a Mayor Vespa 2023 in Flagstaff, Arizona. So guess what? I kind of waited till last minute. I got to prep the last of this, this uh, Stella right here for the raffle bike and um, we'll jump right to the tires, but I have a little bit to say and I'm gonna uh, hand it over to Glenn. He's gonna talk about the, what's going on. So. Well, I appreciate it. First of all, big honor, you know, to be here with you. Thank yeah, you. No problem. <laughs> Got the trailer outside. We have two bikes. I've been driving since six this morning from Phoenix. Picked I can't believe it. He's going back yeah. tonight. <laughs> back tonight. I'm a little tired. Yeah, it, just, it takes up so much free time. Anyway, you guys have been great. Uh, the rally's all set. It's the first to the fourth uh, in Flagstaff. You guys, most of you guys are going to be up there. Uh, you're going to be a big space for you in the registration area. I Don't forget, you're going to be one of the key speakers on Saturday. And um, we're just you know excited to have you up there. I'm excited it's in Flagstaff. It's a it's an awesome town in Arizona. It's pretty much like the Denver of Arizona. Like right now, if you went up there, it's like covered with snow, but give it two more months in June, it's gonna be beautiful up there. And I have gone through uh, Flagstaff in late spring and summer. And unlike like Phoenix and uh, Tucson, where it's very hot, uh, up there in the mountains, it's like perfect temperature. Well, we're going to try and get you out riding. We'll see if they're going to make you work the whole time, but yeah. excited about it. And um, obviously, we'll be selling raffle tickets. Uh, we have other things, too, that we're raffling off. There's this some exhausts. There's the tire pumps. There's a, there's a, the second bike, uh, which is the uh, GT200. Then there's this one. And uh, as everyone has seen, this, when you're on video three now, You've gone through this and made, gone through it, made it perfect. So yeah, I, very, I very couldn't even make that many videos with it. It was just like <laughs> ran. I thought, oh, I'm gonna have to show how to clean the carburetor. I'm gonna have to go all the way through this thing. Uh, it's just a clean uh, part, you know, hardly used example of a Stella from around 2005. So I'm kind of stoked for whoever gets it. Only a couple little like shelf rash scratches from being in a garage. It's very clear that's been in a garage and never left on the side of. The, side of somebody's barn or anything like so many were so up excited whoever yeah, we gets looked, this we looked out the, with it yeah and, and this was originally arizona bike too yeah the arizona bike uh was bought in california never registered in california um obviously so some there's some special tricks to get it registered in california i'm not going to talk about that in this video but uh, whoever wins it they're out of state and they have easy peasy, but California, everything's always difficult here, as everybody knows. Well, I want to thank you guys again. Thank Alex. He's the man sitting behind the camera, you know, and he owns this place. Thank you guys, because uh, you're doing a lot when you're up there, and I appreciate the late nights helping us out. And on um, behalf of myself and Mario with the South Bay Scooter Club and Joe with the Lines of Scooter, who owes you, owes you a couple meals, and then, uh, of course, uh, the Vespa Club of America, we can't thank you guys enough. We're always saying how much you guys are doing for us. So thank you, thank you. And on that, I'll get out of your way and let you finish this up so I can go home. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I want to get this all done. It's going to be a quick, pretty quick video. I'm just going to jump around, show what I'm doing. Uh, but back to Amera Vespa. Uh, if you're interested in registering, I highly recommend registering. Don't just show up for this event. Uh, very inexpensive. You get a lot of perks for joining Vespa Club of America. Just search Google Vespa Club America, and then you could buy your entry into the Flagstaff Rally. And I already heard from Glenn, if you're into long rides that are super scenic, this is the rally to go to. Uh, he's got a long ride going to the Grand Canyon. So not only are you doing a rally, you're gonna see like one of the national parks for all of North America, you know, and I, I enjoy outdoors and hiking and it's, it's one of the first places I went to when I first uh, learned how to ride, actually, a long, long time ago, just out of high school, I said, I'm going to Grand Canyon. I made the mistake of doing it in the summer, so it was some <laughs> miserable riding in the heat, but, so I'm kind of excited. I'm gonna probably bring either a Rally 200 or the new 2023 GTS. Uh, 2023 GTS is gonna be much easier to use in Flagstaff because it's about 7,000 feet. Right. You know, the new ones, you just start them, they work. The I old ones, uh, um, just to give you a couple tips, you're gonna need to rejet it. 
So. I appreciate that. Actually, can we talk about mm -hmm. that for a second? Yeah. So the biggest question that I'm getting and all of us are getting is, uh, I think you said 7,000 feet. I think it, there's areas like by Snowball that are 9,000 feet. So I, people have been asking me with carbureted bikes, so like a buddy, let's say, and especially with jetting, what to do, I mean, over and over. So if, if you can touch on that, I'd appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, I'll give a couple tips just to, you know, before I start, put the tire down, we'll get back, right back to that. But, um, you know, something that's two stroke, you know, these older bikes with a much simpler downdraft carb, they're affected quite a bit. This thing's gonna just run pig rich. All right, so I just wanna give you an example of something like a two-stroke Stella or a P200. You know, hypothetically, you'd have a P200. This is a stock carburetor. It's set up pretty ideal for San Diego. Um, you know, the elevation here is practically zero because we're right out the sea. Um, and you have two jets in there. There's your idle jet, and this whole stack comes out, and your main jet's on the very end of this stack right here. For the main jet, just it's just kind of a, a rule of thumb with these uh, Del Ordo jets. The jets are actually in millimeters, so if you have like a stock P200, it's gonna have like a 118 if it's got oil injection. And the rule of thumb is every thousand feet you go up, take a point off the jet. You know, it's just an old rule of thumb. It's gonna get you pretty close. I mean, obviously, if you have a really high performance tuned bike, uh, probably want to do some plug chops. So here's the main jet stack pulled out of the carburetor. You have some air correctors. I'm not going to talk about how those work. But just to get you pretty close, you have the stock main jet maybe on your P200. It would be typically a 116 main jet. And if you have a performance setup, you're probably already higher. Or if it has no oil injection, it's a little larger. So 116. And you're going up 7,000 feet. So the rule of thumb is maybe one point per thousand feet going up. So you could probably pretty much put like a 100 main jet, 98 and 99, that would get you right in the ballpark where this scooter that was running perfect at sea level with the 116, where it will run much better at elevation like 7,000 feet. Keep in mind, the air is just less condensed, so you're not gonna, um, your bike's just never gonna feel as powerful up at higher elevation. These aren't like modern cars where they have turbochargers. Uh, that run at any elevation, or you got electric that runs perfect everywhere. Um, and sometimes the idle jet, oftentimes you can make a mixture adjustment. You'd probably want to go in maybe a half turn. You know, that's all between the idle speed and the idle mixture. You probably got to thread your idle speed in to allow more air to bypass and then lean out your idle mixture. But sometimes the idle jet, you may want to go leaner as well. So. A uh, typical uh, P200 setup that we have here at sea level, sometimes we'll go as large as a 55-160 or a 52, um, I think it's a 52-140 uh, or something, I think it is, for that idle jet that unthreads, just like the other one. And at elevation, it's probably going to run much better with a, a 50-120 or a 48-120, somewhere in that range. So, and of course, every single scooter is different. Uh, with the automatic scooters, fortunately, most of them have a constant velocity or a CV carburetor. They tend to uh, compensate much better. Like that GT200, that's going to be raffled off. That's uh, the very first large frame automatic Vespa, but it had a carburetor in it. But it's a more sophisticated carburetor. So oftentimes, you don't really need to mess with the jetting. Uh, something like that, you may go maybe two or three sizes smaller on the main jet. And it may help at those high elevations, but oftentimes they'll just be just fine. Uh, the idle speed and idle mixture may need to be adjusted when you're at elevation, uh, but that's kind of the extent of it with the automatic twist and goes that have a much more modern carburetor setup. Right, and people with the electronic fuel injection, basically nothing to worry about? Nothing to worry about. Just a lot of times if you trailer your, your scooter from San Diego, all the way to Flagstaff, you start it. You might be wondering why it stalled out a couple times. Uh, almost all fuel injected modern scooters, they use something called an oxygen sensor. Some of them have a barometer in there to compensate for the elevation, but they rely on feedback from the sensors to eventually make the perfect adjustment for your fuel. And again, if you're running something at 9,000 feet, even a modern 300, it's going to feel the performance is going to be like. A 150 at sea level, especially if you're going up a mountain, you're going to feel it. Um, 
it's kind of no, no replacement for displacement or with cars. I mean, that's why most of them are turbocharged nowadays. They push the air right into the engine. So uh, you're pretty much set if you got something new like that. Obviously, check your air pressure, all that sort of stuff as well. Good deal. Good deal. I think uh, those are some of the main questions people had. Now I'm really going to let you finish this up. Okay. Back to it. <laughs>